All right, here goes. Here is Euler's remarkable result. We have the partition numbers, the crazy numbers that grow very large very quickly without any rhyme or reason, it seems. We have the generalized pentagonal numbers, which Euler was playing with. And now here's a result that connects the two. I will prove the result. I have an essay on my website with, at the same location as these videos. So if you want to see the mathematical details proving it, I'm not going to, I don't shy away from proofs, I have it up for you. But too much to explain here. But here's the result. Euler discovered that if you want to work out the nth pentagonal number, the uh, partition number, excuse me, subtract from it the previous one and subtract from that n minus 2. And then add to that p of n minus 5 and add to that p of n minus 7. And subtract from that p of n minus 12 and subtract from that p of n minus 15. And then add to that p of n minus 22 and keep doing that, plusing minus, so double minus, double plus, double minus. And if you did that forever, he said, well, not quite forever, I'll explain what that means in a moment, you will get zero. Now, what do I mean? Eventually, if I start to say the number 20 and I subtract 1, that's fine. Subtract 2, that's fine. I'll go have 19, I'll have 18. Subtract 5 will give me 20 minus 5 is 15, 13, 8, 5, and then I'm in the negatives. So this formula is to be understood that it actually does stop, that whenever you're trying to work out the partition number of a negative, deem that to be 0 and don't do any work. If uh, one of my numbers happens to be 0, he said, in this formula, just regard to make the formula work, p of 0 to be 1, which doesn't make much sense, but this formula works if you decide, just declare that p of 0 is 1. All right, this is not an explicit formula. It will not tell me what the 20th partition number actually is as a formula of n, but it does tell me how to work out the 20th partition number, assuming I've worked out all the ones below it. Rather than do a 20, let me see if I can use this formula to work out the seventh partition number. Let's see if we can get 15 from this formula. Here's how it works. I need some space. I'll say goodbye to the... Oh, I'm not going to say goodbye to those guys. They're not going to go away. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to write this. Hmm. I think I need another pause. All right. Well, black marker and my board don't go well together. Okay, here again. Here's the table of partition numbers. Here is Euler's remarkable formula connecting partition numbers to the pentag generalized pentagonals. Here's how this formula works. Suppose I didn't know that P7 was 15, that I had actually worked out all the numbers up to the seventh one, didn't know what the seventh one was. Euler says, okay, P of 7, whatever it's going to be, will be subtract P of 1 less, P of 6, I know it, subtract 2 less, P of 5, add P of 7 minus 5 is 2, add P of 7 minus 7, that's P of 0, and then add, subtract p of a negative number, p of negative number, and the negatives, he says, regard this as zero, don't go any further. And apparently, that combination of numbers will add up to zero in the end. Well, p of six, since I've worked in my table up to seven, I know p of six is 11. I know that p of five, went to my table, is seven. p of two is two, and p of zero is declared to be one, just to make this formula work. So now I have that p of seven minus 11 minus seven, plus 2 plus 1 is meant to be 0. Minus 18, minus 15, that tells me p of 7 is indeed 15. So as I said, I will prove this result in the written essay on the same page on my website as these videos. So go there for the actual proof. It is within reach if you know basic calculus. Um, that's actually not too bad. And, uh, and this was a great help in the 1700s. Although people couldn't get to the 100th one explicitly, it did allow people to actually at least compute tables of these things. And that helped out folks in the 1800s, and in particular an Indian mathematician Ramanujan in the 1900s to get a better handle on the petition numbers. That's the next part of our story. Euler's pentagonal theorem is just fabulous. It allowed people to actually compute some partition numbers. In fact, by 1915, people had a table of all the partition numbers up to the number P200. And the table went something like this. They started at zero, P0 equals one. Euler's pentagonal theorem suggests that's the right thing to do. And they went up. And actually, one of the first tables had columns of five starting from zero going upwards. That's important in a moment. Um, Indian ra mathematician Ramanujan really examined this table and played with it and thought about it deeply. And in 1919 or so, I think it was 19, maybe 19 or a little bit earlier, um, he came up with a remarkable formula. He showed that the nth partition number, Pn, is approximately given by this ghastly beast of a formula. 1 divided by 4 times n times square root of 3, then multiply that fraction by e raised to the power of pi to the, uh, times square root of 2n over 3. Crazy! 
Uh, e is a number from calculus. I can tell you E is about 2.718281818, whoops, 28, 45, 90, 45. I'm just showing off. It's actually easy to memorize the decimal places of E. 2.7, 1828, 1828, 45, 90, 45, triangle sort of thing. Anyhow, that's E. E is about 2.7. So there we go. Here's a formula that apparently approximates the partition numbers very well. And with the help of this colleague, G.H. Hardy, they managed to prove this formula is correct. And for bigger and bigger numbers of n, this formula becomes more and more exact. And just to test out, before I made this video, I've got out my calculator. Here's P of 100, it's 190,569,292. And I put n equals 100 to this formula, so it's 1 over 400 times square root of 3, e to the pi to the square root of 200 over 3. And that turns out to be 199,290,893. Now, I know these are off by 9 million, which means it seems like a huge amount. But actually, that relative error is pretty small. And what Hardy and Ramanujan managed to prove that Ramanujan's formula actually does become more and more exact the bigger the number value n you deal with. Okay, that was great. So that's at least an attempt at a formula for the nth partition number, a very direct, explicit formula. It's an approximate one, it's not an exact one. People are still on the hunt for an exact formula. Well, this is where the tables came into play. And another remarkable discovery that Ramanujan made was when he looked at the table displayed this way, he saw that the bottom row always seemed to be a multiple of five. In fact, if I just clear some space for myself, let's see if I can... There we go, that looks good. He noticed that if I take the position number of four plus any multiple of five thereafter, it always seems to be divisible by five. Now, given that, he was able to prove that actually, but he also managed to prove that if you take the every seventh uh, partition number, starting with the fifth one, so any five plus a multiple seven, he managed to prove it's always divisible by seven. And you also notice that every eleventh partition number, starting with the sixth one onward, is divisible by eleven. And this is as far as he got. But those results are remarkable. He just, say that he just managed to see there was some pattern, some structure going on in the partition numbers. And in 1919, 1920, around there, he managed to prove these three results. So basically, there's some connection to primes. Every fifth partition number is divisible by five, if you start at four. Every seventh partition number is divisible by seven, starting at five. And every eleventh partition number is divisible by eleven, starting at six, it turns out. Now, of course, once you found three prime numbers like that behaving this way, you want if this goes on for other prime numbers as well. In particular, about the first two, two and three. So some sort of a relation like this for every second partition number somewhere in this table, every third partition number somewhere in this table, or other primes, 13, 17, and so on. He got stuck. He couldn't go any further. Then came the results of the last 10, 15 years, the next part of our story.